Um, so this is the, I think you have seen set up exactly like, like this in the lecture. And um, this is the simpler setup where um, the question like find the rotation inertia of the bar about the pivot, um, it's uh, easier to answer. So let me um, do this quickly um, kind of, and try to follow these uh, steps I outlined, the one, two, three, four, five. Um, well, without necessarily numbering them. So uh, let me <laughs> do that here. So um, this is a non-uniform bar. Uh, so once again here, I give the density as a function of X. And really the sole purpose of this so that is to make sure that you can just look up in the table of rotation inertia what, um, what a rotation inertia for a bar is. If you do, you'll get a wrong answer. So, um, so uh, understand this setup. And I guess a good part of understanding this setup would be uh, making sure that you understand what the symbol X represents. Here it says X is the distance from the pivoted end point. Um, so this at the pivot is where I have my X equals zero. And when I go all the way to the end here, it's gonna be X equal to L. So this is one feature that makes this problem easier because uh, when I come up with a, a kind of a representative mass element that I can use to write down my infinitesimal contribution to rotational inertia, then this is how I can uh, parameterize this mass element. So it's gonna have a size dx, which I'll combine with the density to get the mass element dm. And for the distance from the pivot to the point, unlike the other question where I had to come up with a separate variable here, I can just use the x or you know, technically what it is that I have the distance as a function of x and that is just equal to x. It's so simple that I can just use the, the coordinate variable x to also mean the distance to the pivot. So, so I can do that. <laughs> and um, so th that particular step makes the next, uh, uh, next step easier. Next step of writing down the infinitesimal rotational inertia is equal to infinitesimal mass of that infinitesimal mass, uh, representative mass times the, it's technically distance squared and I'm just going to use X uh, for that distance since um, it, they happen to match up. Now, in, in case they don't match up, um, I think uh, one of the later parts in this exact question don't match up, then I'll have to write this uh, down again. So this is the step where you do have to be careful. The function that, um, that's represented here, it, uh, should mean distance from center of rotation. And um, in the lucky cases where they do match up with um, the coordinate variable X, then great, use it. When they don't match up, you just have to write it out so that um, it, you don't automatically always say that this is X. So once you have that, then you can write out uh, DI is equal to the dm, it's the same deal as before. It's a density times the dx. That's kind of what density means. So let me write out this uh, density as a function of x, um, or uh, I'm gonna write out dx first. dx times the density, which is 2m over 3l squared, l plus x. Um, so that's dm times x squared. So um, in order to get the rotational inertia of the entire rod, you have to integrate this over the size of the rod. And what that means in this context is we have to integrate this from x equals zero to x equals L. Um, by the way, when you are setting this, um, these limits, sometimes you might get um, um, you might get sign error because uh, sometimes um, 
and the, so here I'm imagining um, integral adding up these pieces starting from this end and then adding up these pieces kind of moving that way in natural limit so with x equals 0 to l but uh, in some circumstances when you do it that way you get a negative answer and what I have to say is at this point you know when and if you get a sign error just uh, know that uh, don't be surprised that it sometimes happens just make sure you get correct sign at the very end. Um, yeah, so um, there's a joke about uh, that a good physicist is a physicist who makes only an even number of sign errors. So at, at some point, what matters more is that you ended with the correct answer at the end, uh, not whether you fastidiously at each step made sure you didn't make a sign error. So yeah, so you do this integral, then you should get an answer and I want uh, bother with the actual integral up here. Um, since it's polynomial integral, it's fairly doable. It's easier than the other one. So, um, so this uh, it calculation of rotational inertia through direct integration, it can't be the whole question. So I'll probably combine it with some static equilibrium setup. So, um, so expect that um, you, the questions you will get likely won't be exactly like this pirate ship question because that involves too much dynamics for your exam three. And it also likely won't be exactly like this question. Oh, because it also involves too much rotational dynamics. So I'll have to think about how to exactly do that. Um, but um, the main thing that I'll be testing for and looking for are basically these steps here. Uh, can you, um, so can you apply this uh, systematic problem solving reasoning process to a new situation that you might not have seen before?